going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Peter Hogendorn, CEO and founder of Sage Potash. It's a pleasure to have you on today, Peter. How are you doing? Great. Thanks so much, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Yes, I'm excited to be talking about the company, you know, as you guys just recently started trading. So can you start by giving us a quick introduction to Sage Potash, along with telling us a little bit more about the company, about the story? I'd love to hear it. Sure. So... Uh, we're a startup, but it's 10 years in the making. I've been involved in this project uh, from the very first exploration uh, 10 years ago as a project generator. Um, the first time we put it together, um, we had a technical package that was sufficient to attract the interest of a, of a local company here in Vancouver with a, a large amount of money in its uh, treasury. Um, the idea was that they were going to spend $9 million for a joint venture. Um, they spent the $9 million, drilled a hole, a uh, very successful hole, um, proved up, you know, hundreds of millions of tons of, uh, of inferred resource. Um, and despite that, it was dropped. Uh, it was dropped primarily because potash um, had a trough, a sudden trough. It went from $700 to $200, $250. And that basically made bankable feasibility impossible. So we had to kind of wait um, for conditions to improve. Um, we had to wait for the land to become reavailable. We put it together again. And um, the conditions around where we're at right now in terms of the global potash markets with the sanctions against Russia, uh, Belarus, which takes 40% of the um, potash uh, production out of the planet um, uh, requirement. Um, gave us an opportunity to, to attract some very significant uh, and sophisticated shareholders to give us an early start as a private company about a year and a half ago, put about $5 million together. And we have now just completed a, a non-offering prospectus and we are trading. And, um, in, uh, and we've also leveraged that money well over the last year. We've acquired a very large land portfolio um, uh, sufficient to give us mining units uh, for several hundred years in a tier one deposit. And um, so we're just kind of getting the story out now. Great. Well, that's quite a unique project. So the company recently announced that it has identified a large scale high grade US based potash reserve. Can you tell us more about this and what it means? Yes. So going back to that poll, um, uh, geology around potash suggests that you uh, your spacings for drilling um, are not like gold and silver, where you have to have very tight spacings uh, to define an ore body. With oil, with uh, potash, it's almost like oil and gas. Potash is really the 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 result of a of an ancient ocean bed um, that existed millions of years, and they leave these large sylvanite um, deposits. And you're looking for flat, um, consistent. Um, um, uh, beds of these sylvanite uh, beds. And so this hole was drilled, as I said, 12 years ago. Um, it defines, it has a radius of influence of about 2,400 meters. Um, in some parts of the world, like in Saskatchewan, they'll give you a 6,000 meter radius of influence. But in that radius of influence, um, at the time we had 3,500 acres of state leases. So that gave us uh, 115 million tons. Uh, we subsequently added to our land acreage um, to increase our percentage of that radius of influence. And so now our technical report restates that uh, inferred resource to 280 million tons uh, based on the land we hold in that ROI. That being said, the more land we acquire uh, within that ROI, um, the, you know, there's likely several hundred million tons there, but that's the land that we control, which is about 85% right now of that ROI. That radius of influence. So let's talk now about potash because you know, on my channel we cover many different sectors. I believe you're the first potash company that we've actually interviewed. So why is now such a great time to consider investing in potash? And can you tell us a little bit more about potash and you know its uses and all of that? So potash is a naturally occurring nutrient. Um, for plants, for all of life. Um, there is no life on planet Earth without potash or phosphate or nitrogen. Um, potash is an, is elephant country. The two largest producers in the world, uh, Canada, country-wise, are Canada, Belarus, and Russia. Um, and then there's China, and then there's Israel. But there, it's um, it's elephant country, but it's um, it's it's a worldwide demand. 
Um, the potash demand around the world is continually growing. Southeast Asia is the largest um, growth opportunity for potash. Um, but essentially, it's a, it's a reusable, consumable commodity. Um, and, um, you know, especially in the U.S. and Canada, uh, arable land is actually diminishing. So we've got to get higher and higher yields uh, from, our, from our arable acreage. And so potash is potential for that. And, and at the end of the day, there's very few companies you can have exposure to as an investor for potash that aren't already fully valued. Um, and the U.S. has no local production, and yet it's the largest uh, consumer of potash. So um, this is a great place for investors to look to have exposure to potash. So what sets Sage apart from its competitors or other companies within the industry? Well, I think going back to location is huge. Um, you know, for other um, potash suppliers, they've got to ship by rail. Um, rail is is at a premium right now, uh, primarily because all the pipelines were canceled and most of the rail capacity has gone to oil and gas. So rail has gone up to the roof. Um, and to get the potash from Saskatchewan to the U.S. is going to run anywhere from $150 to $225 a ton. Uh, we don't incur those costs. We're in the truckload market. We're in the market that everybody has to, has to rail to. So that's a key differentiator. Uh, another differentiator is uh, the world has changed. You know, we're no longer in a global um, focused environment uh, relying on on uh, global supply chains. Um, we're now everybody's looking to deglobalization, de and now we've got food security as an issue. Um, and the world is looking at that, including the U.S. So, so we're kind of in that place where it uh, makes sense for the U.S. to have its own, um, its own supply, uh, domestic supply. And um, our approach to developing this project is also very significant, uh, significantly different than what other people are, uh, are using in the, in the past. So uh, another key differentiator is that um, it's, it's, it's our planning for development our planning for use of capital. Um, and what we're trying to do is to stay away from the large greenfield um, developments, uh, which can take, you know, four, five, eight, nine years of intensive uh, capital uh, risk and investment uh, before you're in production. Um, potash can resemble as a production um, process can resemble much closer to oil and gas than it does to gold and copper, for instance. Um, oil and gas, your production hole, I'm sorry, your exploration hole can instantly convert into a production hole. Um, potash is, can be similar to that. Um, you know, many of the discoveries in, uh, in, in producers in Saskatchewan started with one hole. Uh, because you're looking at very, very large radius of influence. And so you've got high confidence geology. Um, so our intention is to try to Im implement a um, staged and modular um, uh, production model where we can start off with a 50,000 ton unit or a 100,000 ton unit, and that'll be a standalone economic unit. And then we'll expand on demand with additional modular units. So that way we don't leave uh, capital at risk um, that in the case of a commodity price trough and we can ex and we can leverage immediate um, market conditions with good margins and speaking of margins um, just that two hundred dollar transportation cost is potentially a margin for us so that's a major differentiator definitely so can you tell us more about the management team and what they bring to the table yes. So we have attracted a, um, a team, uh, starting with our engineering partners, um, Respec. Um, they introduced me to Pat Avery. Pat Avery has um, been the president of Intrepid uh, Potash, which is uh, really the only significant producer um, in the U.S. right now. And they produce about 3%, 3.5% of the, uh, of the uh, U.S. Uh, domestic requirements. Uh, but Pat has had... Um, exposure and experience for many, many years in all aspects of uh, potash, whether it's solution mining um, and, 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 and putting uh, uh, new caverns into production, uh, surface process um, processing, 
uh, distribution operations. Um, he's been senior management of fertilizer companies like Simplot, um, uh, phosphate companies, um, it, you know, so all aspects of the regional um, fertilizer industry, he's had his hand in. And he's also participated and worked for many, many senior, um, you know, private equity firms, investment um, um, groups, doing due diligence for them on projects. Um, so the the quality of this project brought him to us through an introduction to, to respect by respect. So he's been key to our whole strategy, our engineering focus, um, and um, and also bringing us um, uh, a lot of credibility in the industry. Uh, we'll be adding new people along just from his his Rolodex. Um, we've also attracted. Uh, Pat Veras. Pat Veras um, developed the Western Potash deposit, $245 million. So he's able to bring to us a tremendous amount of experience on, on, um, on exploration, on development, uh, what to do, what not to do, um, you know, how things can be most efficient. But at the end of the day, our approach has appealed to people like that to be part of our team. No, it sounds like you have a highly experienced management team, and I look forward to covering the story. So, you know, Sage is a fairly new listing. What should we be looking forward to from the company this year? What should we be excited about? Well, uh, we've had about seven, maybe close to a year to operate as a private company. So we've actually advanced um, quite significantly and uh, with, a, with, with, a, with agility, um, like a private company has that um, that. Uh, at its um, as an opportunity, so we've already acquired you know a, a very large land position, a combination of private mineral leases, um, uh, state mineral leases, and uh, BLM um, prospecting permit applications. So we now have sufficient contiguous lands where we can do meaningful engineering around mining units and around development, and about where we want to do our next um, holes for. Um, for uh, resource, um, new resource calculations. Uh, they can double as, uh, you know, cavern development um, um, engineering uh, activities, all working towards a PEA. So, you know, we're in the PEA function, we're working on that. So this is news. Um, we've got more land coming on board that we'll probably be adding to and talking to. We're gonna have new people coming on board, but, you know, we are at a point where there's good engineering news going to be coming up, and that's really where we're at. And we have that benefit from starting off with more money than what a lot of startups um, start up with. No, that's very exciting, and I do look forward to following your progress. So where's the best place for investors or prospective shareholders to find out more information on the company? I think our website's a great place to be. It's uh, going to give you a lot of background on potash. It's going to give you a lot of uh, background on the market, um, our geology, our team. Um, and it's a great place to, to, to keep an eye out for, for new news as we're going along, which is simply sagepotash.com. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for sharing your story. I definitely learned something about potash today. It's quite interesting, and I uh, hope our viewers learn something as well. So I look forward to covering the story, having you back on in the near future. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself, this video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.